All right, so in this video, we are going to talk about Jupyter Notebooks. But why are we anyway talking about Jupyter Notebooks? The reason is, in the recent past, Jupyter Notebook has gained a lot of popularity because of its simplicity, rich user experience, and a great way to go ahead and write your solutions. Now, Jupyter Notebook is not just used by data scientists, even finance people use it. Uh, people coming from C and C++ background also use it. And guess what? Even right these days, .NET, uh, Java, even SQL guys have started using Jupyter Notebooks because they are very, very lightweight and gives you a very good experience while you're building your solutions. Now, in this video, we are not going to see on how you can install Jupyter Notebook. But why is that? The reason is I want you to go ahead and install Jupyter Hub, which I have explained in my previous video that I'll give over here and also in the description. But why in any way I want you to go ahead and install Jupyter Hub or sorry, Jupyter Lab, boom. <laughs> but why in any way I want you to install Jupyter Lab and not Jupyter Notebooks? Because when you go ahead and install Jupyter Lab, you don't, you not only install different ter uh, terminals, uh, consoles, markdown, you also install Jupyter Notebook itself. So for any of you who do not understand what Jupyter Lab is, Jupyter Lab is an ecosystem that runs on the web for data science and for other C and C++ guys too. So even if you don't want to go ahead and watch that video the entire, maybe watch first five minutes and that's it. But if you are really interested to understand how Jupyter Hub works, Jupyter Lab works, you need to definitely watch that video and die too. So in this video, we're gonna switch to screencast and look at the different type of um, cells that we have, what are Jupyter Notebooks, how you can use it, export it, all coming in this video. And as I always say, coming up. All right, let's get started. So the very first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open my command prompt and there I'm going to write Jupyter Lab. Now I already have this installed in my system. So when I go ahead and press enter, it's going to open Jupyter Lab in my default browser. As you can see, it's loading right now in my Chrome. So you see, I have this Jupyter Lab open in my browser. So this is called the launcher and in the launcher, you can find notebooks, consoles, terminals, text files, markdown files, but we are interested in this Jupyter Notebook. So either you can click on this one and get started or you can go to File, New and Notebook. Now, we already have this notebook. The moment we go ahead and create a notebook, you can see it says, which Python do you want? If I have multiple Python, for instance, Python version two, Python version three, it is going to give me options. Now, I only have Python three installed, so I'm gonna click select. This is how my Python uh, Jupyter Notebook looks like. Now, this video is for Jupyter Notebook and I have shown you how you can go ahead and create a Jupyter Notebook through the Jupyter Lab. But if you have installed Jupyter Lab, you can also go ahead and simply just run Jupyter Notebook. Just go to command prompt and write Jupyter Notebook and now it is going to open just a dedicated Jupyter Notebook. So what you can actually do here is now, if you might have noticed, now this is of course a file directory. You can find all your Jupyter Notebooks over here. You can also create a new folder, right? A folder and there you can keep on adding your Jupyter Notebooks. Now, one thing to notice here, we have already existing Jupyter Notebook with an extension IPYNB. That is actually the extension of the Jupyter Notebooks and the name is untitled. But I never created a Jupyter Notebook over here. I actually created over here. You see, I created over here and it is also visible over here. You can see this is the same directory. This is the same directory. So you see, uh, we're just working on some different UI, but at the end of the day, these are two same things. But for, for this video, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the details of Jupyter Notebook from here. So I'm going to click on this Jupyter Notebook. Now it is going to open Jupyter Notebook in another tab. First thing first, so we have on the top, it says untitled. I can go ahead and rename it. I can say uh, youtube.com uh, slash Stephen Simon. I don't know if having a dot in the name is a good thing or not. Ooh, must have one or more character contains. Never mind. I'm going to remove this one and just name it as Stephen Simon. So you now see I have renamed the Jupyter uh, Notebook. Now, 
Next thing, we have this bar, it's called menu bar. Now this menu bar is exactly similar to what you find over here. All the same functionalities, file, edit, view, run, kernel, tab settings, help, etc. You can all find these over here. What the interesting thing is the second one, which is called toolbar. Now toolbar, you can in the toolbar, you can go ahead and save. You can create a new cell. Now, what is the cell? What you see actually over here, this is one cell. This is where you go ahead and write your Python code. We're going to get there. Or maybe let's do one thing. Let's let me go ahead and click on this cell and write something. So when I say this is a cell, think of it as a one section. Okay, this is a one section where you can go ahead and type something. Now, what you can type something, depending upon your content, you can add three different type. Either you can add a code content. For instance, I can go ahead and write print. Okay, oops. And I can go ahead right here. Hello world. See, now I have written a Python code over here. Now, if I want to go ahead and execute it, I'll do shift enter, or I can also use this one, this, this um, button on the menu, on the menu bar, okay, or toolbar, sorry. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a keyboard shortcut that is shift enter. Now it is going to run this uh, Python code, and now I get hello world. That is the first kind of cell that you get. The other kind of cell that you get is called the markdown cell. Now, how you can go ahead and change it? You can see I have a markdown cell. Now, if I just select it, you can see I just I can just go ahead and write this is a random markdown cell. Again, shift enter. You see I get a simple plain text, nothing. So what this does is this helps you go ahead and manage your Jupyter notebooks. Maybe you can add some of the paragraphs. Maybe you can go ahead and write some better explanation to the code that you have. Apart from that, the next one that we get is the, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe click on headings. Now uh, it says Jupyter no longer uses special heading cells. Instead, write you mouse cell, okay. Oh, uh, never mind. let's leave it. Okay, so uh, markdown is something you can go ahead and write some of your markdown. For someone who do not know what are markdowns, these are ways on how you can uh, go ahead and write some of your text files. So if I have one hash, it means this is heading one okay now i have written this with a hash in front of it when i press shift enter you see it changes into a heading if i go ahead and double hash now i need to go ahead and change this cell right now to go ahead and change this cell i need not go there and do it every time i can click on this one and actually find a keyboard shortcut that is i need a markdown change cell keyboard shortcut which is actually m so while this cell is selected, I'm going to press M on my keyboard. You see, now my cell has been changed to a markdown cell and now I can go ahead and write uh, another heading. Now this is heading two, I've used two hash, so it will be a little small one. In the same way, now I need to go ahead and I need markdown again. This is heading three. And there you go. In the same way, you can go ahead and also make some paragraph. You can make bullet points and there are many things that you can go ahead and do it. So talking about the browser ca capabilities, uh, it actually supports, uh, it, it supports Chrome, Safari and Firefox. So what you can also do here is you can go to file, click on save. You can definitely save, but pretty interesting thing over here. You can click on download as, and you can either download in HTML, a markdown file, a Python notebook or a simple Python file. Now, If I go ahead and click on HTML, you can see an HTML file has been downloaded. If I click on it, there you go. I have a Jupyter notebook uh, HTML in HTML form that I can go ahead and share with anyone. I can put it on any of my blogging websites or a website wherever you want. You can just put it and people will be able to go ahead and uh, read them. So pretty, pretty nice thing to do. Uh, definitely you want to go ahead and now a few things if you can if you want to go ahead and run the cell just above a particular cell for instance I want code to run just above it I can use this one or just below all the cells you, I can use this one and then you get an option about kernels too if you want to just go ahead and stop everything the kernel you see it says interrupting kernel and now everything is stopped I can also go ahead and maybe clear all the outputs um, which I cannot actually find it right now. Kernel, the restart and clear output. So once I do that, uh, everything is gone. You can see the output is gone of this file. And if I just go ahead and rerun it, 
that's how you get it so it can it can be very interactive uh, you can go ahead and experiment at your own pace that should be very helpful and uh, yep this is the example file i wanted to show you i mean you can see this is a complete jupyter notebook file with different cells you can add images you can add links and you can create tables i think i'm going to create a dedicated video that's going to talk about the all different types of uh, markdown you can use so i think that would be my next video for 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 this jupyter series so that was it we saw how you can go ahead and start the jupyter notebooks jupyter hub on how you can create jupyter notebooks rename it work with different kind of cells and how to use keyboard shortcuts now it's all the creativity that you bring in and let me know in the comment section and share the links to different jupyter notebooks that you have created and let me know what different kind of videos that you want me to make as i think the next video i'm gonna make will be on all different type of markdowns you can use to decorate and well document your Jupyter notebooks and having said that if you are someone who wants to learn about data science engineering and programming then this channel is for you and please do share like and subscribe i really need it thank you so much and i'll see you in the next video